Hello everybody, this is kind of a, a good basic layout on how to work with DaVinci Resolve 12. The, and I am using here on, on this PC, I am using the version which is the free version. This is just called DaVinci Resolve 12. They don't call it Lite anymore. The difference between this and the Studio, the Studio offers some other version and some other things like you're able to work with their full-on panel. You need a professional, you need the professional studio version for that um, and it works with the footage higher and it will actually export out to uh, uh, footage higher than 4K. There are some uh, other things that the studio version does but for the most part the DaVinci Studio Resolve 12, the free version, does almost anything you need it to do. Uh, for, for color correction and it re exports out to things for uh, for a large movie screen if you're going to be doing that and it does to YouTube to HD television it does to almost any format you can think of so it's it's uh, great software to use very fast color correction software and it works on both PC and a Mac and with that being said I do have another upcoming tutorial that will be on how to prepare fully prepare a project to go to DaVinci Resolve that includes uh, items such as effects and uh, things if you're, if you're doing like stabilization on shots and some eff and other effects on how to properly bring that project over to DaVinci Resolve from your nonlinear editor. With this, I'm just showing kind of the basics. I'm using Premiere Pro here to export out, and this will be very similar with any nonlinear editor you use. You will have to export out a an either on either an EDL an edit decision list or probably one of the best ones it's the most universal I call it an EDL on steroids is a Final Cut Pro XML which is embedded in Premiere it works in it works in Final Cut Pro obviously and you also have to and with Avid there's also AAC there's several different formats you can export out for a universal for a universal edit decision list in this tutorial I'm showing Premiere we have a basic edit here of a short film of somebody trying to open up a can of uh, biscuit dough and kind of the tension that builds up as this person's trying to open up the up a can of biscuit dough when it's getting ready for it to explode and we've got the edit here and we've got a basic sound edit this is not the full-on sound mix this has been sent off for somebody else to do the sound mix so one thing you're going to do if you want to take over a sound mix to DaVinci Resolve you're going to want your sound person or you can do it if you got one in Premiere you can export it out I recommend flattening your audio into one sound into just one track as opposed to trying to reconnect a, a big complex sound mix inside of Premiere Pro so I've got the basic edit here with the basic sound mix I'm going to export this out a couple things that I want you to notice is there hasn't been any effects created on this timeline here this is just a basic short film edit a couple things a few things that DaVinci Resolve will understand when you export it over from something like Premiere are actually these items up here I'm going to select this clip and move up to my motion tab up here and these are the basic attributes that DaVinci Resolve will understand if you if you change position if you change scale if you change rotation and anchor point it will understand those items in the uh, Final Cut Pro XML that you export out of Premiere. A couple other things that it understands besides basic edits here, the clip names and basic edits are dissolves. It'll understand fade ins, it'll understand also cross dissolves as well. Here's a cross dissolve, it will bring those cross dissolves and fade ins and fade outs over to DaVinci Resolve through a Final Cut Pro XML. A Final Cut Pro XML or an EDL is basically, like I said, it's basically a universal project file that tells how the edit is done with the footage that you have. One other thing to note here, if you ever are editing, if you're shooting 5K, 6K footage and your computer doesn't keep up with it and you've been doing what's called offline or proxy editing, proxy editing is where you use footage that is not the original footage. This footage was uh, 5K and 4K footage that's mixed and it has been resized to 1920 by 1080 hence it's got these letter boxes here which we're not going to be using in the end. Uh, notice this footage is not, this is 16 by 9 uh, 4K footage and this is um, this is 1.85 aspect ratio here with 5K footage so we're using some mixed resolutions and aspect ratios here in this timeline which is fine because in coloring you're going that is going to be the final step of coloring is sizing these images to meet the the final uh, viewing aspect ratio and resolution and luckily with this footage is high enough resolution that we're going to be able to do that so once again this is offline footage if I go down here and click on one of these and look at the attributes this is 1920 by 1080 it's all been downscaled it's got the if I right click on this and and uh, go to reveal and explore it'll bring up the footage it'll bring up the footage in the Explorer and these files actually in here are MOVs these are MOV files that have been exported out from red footage uh, the original red footage name you hear you have uh, the camera number the real number and the 
clip number right there. So the names are exactly the same as the red footage except the extension is different. So I'm editing with offline footage but when we take it to Resolve, Resolve is going to edit, is going to color the original high resolution red footage so it maintains the quality but it's using this edit decision down here to show how the edit is going to go into, into Resolve. So let's, let's do the first step here. I'm going to go up to File, Export and of course I have my timeline selected. Make sure your timeline is selected. Uh, file export and I'm going to go to Final Cut Pro XML. EDL will work as well but like I said Final Cut Pro will retain a lot more information also if you do things like speed if you don't do not necessarily speed ramping but if you do speed uh, adjustments when you right click on a clip and go to speed duration and do double speed or something like that the Resolve will also understand speed. It'll understand zoom and, uh, and a few other items but it will not understand effects that are native to Premiere. So I'm going, and in that instance, you would have to flatten your files into different movie files. But I'm going to go to File, Export, and we're going to go to Final Cut Pro XML. The last where I want to save this right now, I'm just going to save it on the desktop. I'd recommend saving everything into one location or your one folder that you're working. And I'm going to call this Biscuit Edit XML, just so I know what that is, and save that out. Within that file, there's that file right there. Within this file, it, retain, it retains, let's actually show you some of the information that it does contain. This is a way more complex EDL, so I'm going to show you a basic EDL and show you what basic information is retained in the EDL. I'm going to go to EDL. Let's just show you. If you do an EDL, you'll want to use the source file name. I'm just going to hit OK and send this to the desktop. I'm not going to use this, but I just wanted to show you what this looks like here. There's my EDL right there. I'm going to open up my notepad and show you the text information that is in this EDL. It's a very, very small file. It's a very small file. If we look at the size of this thing, this is only like not even a megabyte. This is really small. This is five kilobytes here, uh, about six kilobytes. I'm going to grab that, drop it into my notepad, and what you've got on an EDL is your first shot is your video, and it starts at zero on your timeline and ends at one second on the timeline. This is actually just black right there. This says this is black. As we move along here, you'll start seeing these edits where you have basically the name of the clip with the MOV with the extension you have its end point time code, its out point time code, uh, its place on the timeline and its duration on the timeline. And then as you move down to these new clips here it has the audio as well. I sent the audio over so it has the audio information as well and then it has the next video clip edit and shows its end point, out point, its uh, beginning time on the, t on, the time on the timeline and the uh, duration of that edit. Now if you're using the studio version, it will it's used to working on a server, so it's going to ask you to set up a new user. The regular version does not, but what it will do when you open up Resolve, it'll have this splash screen right here. This is where your projects are saved. It'll maintain all your projects in here. It'll show the name of each project that you're working on. Right now I have no projects, so I'm going to, and actually I have an untitled project here that I can use. It'll always have an untitled one to start with. I'm going to right click on this, and just for color correction, I'm going to config my project. I'm going to make it 1920 by 1080 just to start with. When I'm done, actually, I'm going to be changing the resolution. Actually, I could do that right now. I know that I want to do this in CinemaScope, but, but uh, let, let's keep it 1920 by 1080, and we'll switch this later on when we're finished editing. But one very important part here that you want to change is going to be your time frame rate. This was shot in drop frame 24 frames per second, so this should be 23.976. And a lot of these other settings, you can just leave them the same. If you have video cards and other things that are going out full screen, there's some other settings down here, but we're going through the basics here. So I'm going to save that. And now I'm going to right click and rename this. I'm going to call this Biscuit Edit. This is my Biscuit Edit color correction here. So I'm going to, now I can actually double click on this and start it up. Once Resolve starts, you'll notice four tabs here at the bottom. You've got your Media tab, your Edit tab, your Color tab, and your Deliver tab. And it's going to kind of go in this order as a workflow. You start off with your media importing, any basic editing that you need to, or import of an XML, your color correction, and then deliver. But this is the big tab right here. This is really where uh, DaVinci Resolve shines. I'm going to go up to, first of all, I don't like this white bar that goes across if you're working in a dark kind of a dark room and you like to really look at your color correction you're working on some nice monitors if you have color calibrated monitors or not still you want to go to workspace I like to go down to layout and tell this to do full screen it gets rid of those bars and it gets rid of your windows on, uh, on the and all you're looking at is just this layout of DaVinci Resolve if you want to go back to windows or back to Mac or whatever you're working on you can just do command tab or windows alt tab and find the program that you're working in and uh, go to that or you can if you want to hide uh, DaVinci Resolve just do Windows D Apple H on a on a Mac will hide it Windows D hold down your Windows key and hit D it'll disappear everything will go to your desktop 
So if you need to quickly navigate other places. Now one thing I'm going to do up here is since I did an offline edit, I want to, uh, right now this are, these are the drives that uh, this is reading right now. I've got all these drive letters that are being read, but I want to put in a very specific location. I want to put in the, add the location where I'm going to be finding my footage, my high res footage that I'm going to be working on. Let me show you something here on my hard drive. On my hard drive, under my biscuit edit project here, I've got two folders that have been very intentionally separated. One is all the high quality red footage. The other one is the offline HD footage. If you're shooting on DSLR, this is something you're not going to be, you probably won't be editing in offline or proxy. You won't be proxy editing. So this is really for really high quality footage that your computer can't keep up with. There's my red footage right there. That's got all, and this and this is my mirrored footage of offline 1920 by 1080. So I'm just going to be adding this and telling DaVinci Resolve to look for the red footage and not the offline HD. And DaVinci Resolve will ignore the extensions and just choose the names of the video clips. Let's go to DaVinci Resolve and go to Preferences. And I'm going. And this is under Preferences. This is where you're going to add drives for it to look for footage. I'm going to hit Add. I'm going to go to my hard drive. Here's my biscuit edit. Go into here, and I'm going to select my red footage folder and select it. I'm not going to double click on it. Just select it, highlight it, and hit select folder. And it is added right there. Now I've got that location right there, and I can hit save. It's going to tell you that DaVinci Resolve has to reset, has to restart. So these changes will will, will take effect next time DaVinci Resolve is started. Control Q or Command Q on a Mac will quit Resolve. You can save your project, restart Resolve. And you'll notice that my project has been saved there, my Biscuit Edit project, and it's got a new untitled project. It always has a new untitled project. I'm just going to double click on my Biscuit Edit project here. Opens up, and there is that drive right up there in my media storage area. Now I can select this, and it will bring up my media right here. And what I've got under the red footage is I've got these cards with all the footage of the red. And you don't have to go into in, deep into each one of these cards here. Actually, I'm just going to go back out to this main directory here. I know I've got all my red footage in these, so I'm going to highlight them, right click on them, and if you have folders and subfolders within uh, folders within folders like you do on red footage, you can just right click on these and say add folders, add folder and subfolders into media pool. This will just find all the media in there and don't and it won't worry about folders or structure or anything like that, and it will just bring all the media from here into my media pool down here. Now also if you have a sound mix, let's pretend like I've got a sound mix here. I'm going to go over here and just export this out as a as a WAV file here. I'm going to go File, Export, Media. I'm going to, ex I'm going to do a quick mix down of my audio here. And I recommend doing, always doing this with DaVinci Resolve. Just do a quick mix down because it's not a, you're not going to be necessarily editing audio in, in Resolve as much as you're just going to be color correcting and color grading. So I'm going to call this Biscuit Sound Mix. I'm going to actually save it in the same location in my Biscuit Edit folder. I'm going to save it there, export. And now as I go back to my DaVinci Resolve folder, I'm going to right click on this folder and refresh. And actually, I'm going to put that in the same location as my red footage because that's a folder that I've added to DaVinci Resolve. So now when I go back and I right click on this and say refresh, my audio shows up. That's my sound mix right there. So I'm going to drag that down into DaVinci Resolve as well, or you can right click on it and say, say tell it to add it to the media pool. And I've got my audio and I've got all my video clips in that I need for this project. This is all my media. You've got to know where all your media is. And this is all my 5K and 4K footage. Next stage. So now that I've got my footage imported, I've got my sound mix, I am going to go to edit. Edit, here's a timeline right here. But the timeline, notice it doesn't have anything in it yet. We have to import that EDL or that XML that we exported out of Final Cut. I'm going to go file. I'm going to go to import AAF. That's the Avid file or the EDL is the universal file and XML is Final Cut. So I'm going to do that. Go to desktop. And there is my biscuit XML right there. Select that one. Open it. It's going to ask you a couple questions here. Do you want to automatically set the project settings? No, I don't, because I've already done that. I've set up myself, and I'm going to change that later on. Automatically import source clips in the media pool. No, I don't, because I have added them manually here. I kind of like doing everything manually. It's a recommendation. Use sizing information. If you've done resizing, yes, you can maintain that. But I'm going to hit OK. And it brings up a little error here because I did not connect this. I did not let it find my audio folder, just the red footage, because I don't care about audio right now. I, I've got my final sound mix, and that's all I need. I'm going to hit close. And here is my movie here. It's got a little fade in there at the beginning. It recognized that. So we move along here. It's got, uh, by the way, these are Final Cut Pro 7 shortcuts, if, you're, if anybody remembers those. I do. I used to use it quite a bit. Control or Command minus zooms out. 
Control plus zooms into your timeline. Shift Z shows your entire timeline. Those are the Final Cut Pro 7 shortcuts. I want to get rid of my audio here. So if you've got a bunch of audio down here, what I could do is just lock my video. If you have multiple video tracks, lock all of your video tracks. Do Control A and delete. And notice it left my video because I have this locked and got rid of everything else, all my audio. And now I'm going to go up and grab my Biscuit Sound Mix, drag it down here, drop it in, lock it to the very beginning of the timeline here, drop it, and now I have a sound mix on there. If I do need to hear sound as well, it's there. So now I've got my EDL or my XML in this instance imported into Resolve. I've got my sound mix in here and I am ready to go to the color tab. I'm going to hit Control S to save this, by the way, to save my, my progress. One thing I recommend up in File and Project Settings is go under Auto Save and turn your Auto Save on. By default, this is off, and I wish they wouldn't do that. But I'm going to turn this on. I'm going to tell it to save every five minutes. I like it saving as 10 minutes of work to me. Sometimes it's a lot of tedious work that I don't want to go back and do again. So I'm going to hit Save, and now my Auto Save is turned on. Let's go to Color. 